the two Martins. We have you, Martin Ancelini, originally from Colombia, the country of, but we're blessed to have had you in Hawaii with us for almost a year now. Welcome back, Martin. And we have me, Martin Despang, uh, half around the world in near Munich, Germany at 11 p.m. ish, and you, Martin, are at 11 a.m. ish. So um, this is an architecture show, and we both are associated with a school of architecture up at Manoa. In fact, where you are sitting, this is the Scheidler Business School, the capital yeah. concentration place, we can say, where you know, get <laughs> educated there. <laughs> so um, we're always told, Martin, uh, two things we're not supposed to talk about in architect or in education at all. One is religion and the other one is politics. So the question is, are we then going to stay silent and don't say anything? Because the two things are kind of the things we agree on as as society. So we we want to talk about. So um, what we have behind us is the most recent news uh, there in uh, from the United States with President Biden saying he's not going to Uh, run uh, in the in the in the upcoming election, and so we have um, a couple of quotes here from the World News, from uh, you know currently and also from you know recently, and what um, just sharing you know thoughts about it. Um, two show quotes we have up here from about three years ago. Uh, when uh, Joe Biden uh, uh, became president and we were not little did we know, but we were making the comparison to Jimmy Carter and here from the Wall Street Journal at the top left uh, about uh, not even a, like half a year ago, a little longer, they were already seeing a connection, uh, both being in trouble as far as what they were facing. And now this has become true. Uh, of course, um, you know, uh, Jimmy went up and wasn't reelected and, and Joe now uh, wants to prevent that ahead of time and wants to step aside. But um, if you ask political analysts, you know, they see a lot of connections or not. So maybe uh, we leave it with that for, for this part. But I want to go to the other side, to the right side here, more importantly, which is about women, women. So the plural. And, and this is about um, that Kamala Harris is going to be uh, nominated very likely. Um, and uh, I just want to make the pitch and I want to join you, Martin, about everyone who will vote. Don't be afraid of women at all and don't be afraid of them as leading you because uh, we're going to have uh, reference to my culture here. We just had Angela Merkel turning 70. And she got praise uh, down there. It says on Yahoo, it says praise pours in for Merkel as she celebrates her 70th birthday. That makes it she's out of office for a couple of years. So but she's been in office actually for one and a half decades. In fact, uh, when she started, when I escaped and, and slipped away to the United States. So um, I was always uh, sort of from remote. I was very proud to see. Uh, the country, the culture I had left, which you had not left, but you went away from yours now for a little bit. And you've been all over the place. You've been in Switzerland. You've been in Barcelona, where we eventually go back because this is what the show is about. So I was very proud. And also the other woman that we were in close touch with and had the chance to educate each other about architecture has been named by Forbes Middle East here up there, the world's most powerful woman. That is Ursula von der Leyen, who is the commission president of the European Union. So I can just say from my own experience, Ursula is even from my home state, and that's how we know each other through some architectural angles. And if you want to know more about it, you can watch that show here, Humane, uh, Human New 2021. But that doesn't matter. More importantly, again, we have I'm, I'm very close to two women that have been doing a great job in, in leading in leading my culture. So all fellow Americans, and this is now my American side, don't be afraid of that. It's about time. It's actually overdue to have. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, definitely. Well, women, a little bit of less testosterone in politics, I think it would work pretty good. You, you had 
Also, Angela Merkel in Germany, now Mexico re-elected re-elect, the first women president uh, in North America, uh, an interesting person. And I think this uh, shape is also changing. Now we have more uh, student architect, women student architects. So in the future, architecture will also be uh, uh, led by, by women, which is great. It is. So now we cut the angle back to architecture. Uh, Jay provided us with the most recent news from the Pacific Business News, which he obviously subscribed. Uh, I, I didn't, I, you could just see the headline, but that was enough for me. And it immediately brought back the, the memory of the capital concentration we were talking about. And in fact, the, the corporation part um, because it says architecture firm uh, with Honolulu office acquired by global professional services company, which sounds exciting, right? What's going on? There's some dynamics going on, maybe women, right? As you say, Martin. But then it's like uh, these three letters twice is J H D acquires R I M architects. And GHD, shame on me, I didn't even know I looked it up, you know, and I, they haven't really, you know, it's, it's more an engineering firm, nothing against engineers, they're sometimes the better ones, but this one here doesn't have any, any qualification in architecture. And RIM Architects, you remember them when we were actually having our field trip last semester in Norman Lacayo's uh, Harbor uh, Court building, <laughs> the office next to the one we were visiting had that name on the door, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they're yeah. in that horrific sort of microwave part of the building. And so I, when you look up, sorry, I mean, this is just Google is just the tool, right? I looked them up. The most uh, of their projects is actually a furniture store on Capulani Boulevard from some years ago. So again, this is this is not particularly exciting news. It's more on on the other end. And, you know, this is trying to get better. This is by our uh, affordable housing senator, Stanley Chang, who happens to send us his email blast or his, his newsletter blast uh, the same uh, day. Actually, we used to have the shows on Wednesday. So now we're on, on Mondays here. He keeps sending us that. And again, he, his heart is at the right place. He said, our homes ending the housing crisis here he, he reports on something you could be excited about because it's the old leasehold that Hawaii reminds me of DHHL and that kind of almost like a, uh, like a um, what do you call it here, a Genossenschaft uh, kind of a system which reminds us of the European, you know, you're in Switzerland and that, that, that not corporation but corporation. Um, and then they talk about state-owned and country-owned land, county-owned land. And then they talk about low-cost residential condominium units. This sounds all very exciting uh, to the point when let's just get that bigger, this picture here. What, what is that? What, what kind of, you know, moods do you get when you look at that? Yeah, this, this is the kind of building that uh, elsewhere are throwing away. I mean, I think I, I, I barely see some balconies, which is good, and some internal uh, space without cars, which is also good. Uh, but this is not habitat. This is, uh, this is storage. <laughs> yeah, warehousing the workforce, we called it once before. Yeah. And, and this is pretty much even I go to this is Soviet unionism here. Yeah. Uh, and then they say, you know, the developer they choose for this year, they did because they did a project well, which is called the Ililani. And now we would need the Soto again, who's like, oh, this is my, my culture, my language. So maybe it's something that has to do with the virtues of Hawaii. But this is the project. It's on the Eva edge of Kaka'ako, of my Kaka'ako or our Kaka'ako Kamehameha schools. But this is not their... Uh, their area anymore. It's just off it, and this is a another developer, and and there we go. Uh, this 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 project here, uh, once again, same old, you know, interiorized, suffocating uh, 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 circulation on the inside. Um, one could say, you know, it's 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 sort of uh, preventing the 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 low sun from the east and 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 west morning and afternoon sun. 
and it's basically opening up to Eva and, and Diamond Head. Um, it, it has Lanai's to give it some credit here, but uh, we used our PIing mobile here the way that Lenny, who was just uh, visiting us here, who kept the hard top on for whatever reason. And so is what the project ended up to being Mumud and basically boarded up here. And um, this is it. Does that look exciting yeah. or not? <laughs> no, I, so by many, I mean, if you as, as, as government, you own the land, which could be 20, 30 or 30% of the budget of a project, you own even part of the money to promote the project. And you don't require clients. You don't have to sell the project because there is a housing crisis. So the people will come anyway. Why do you do it uh, in such a cheap way? No, I mean, I mean, we could, as 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 government, that all the land, land, all the all the clients, and part of the budget, you could put the conditions to good a good habitat. And then what? Uh, there is an argument. Uh, about about density. Okay, I understand that this is convenient. The more dense the developments are, the less the less land you require to to host more people, which is good. No, you don't invade, you don't occupy, but you can achieve a, a fair enough density. Probably not 300 or 400 inhabitants per acre as Hong Kong, but you can host 200 inhabitants per acre to the 200, 200 housing units. Sorry, per acre. Uh, with a very good quality project, you just have to see what uh, some of the projects that that are, have been happening here in, in in Hawaii, but also what the Australians are doing, the Germans are doing uh, uh, back uh, where you are, Martin. Uh, so these are not arguments uh, to to yeah. do this kind of again uh, storage yeah. architecture. And we're actually going back to this argument. Both where we come from is actually not the high rise. Uh, that is the predominant and most efficient and effective way, but the urban perimeter, perimeter block, uh, the block Randbebauung, as you recall it from your Switzerland days. And it's up, it's from like six to seven, eight, nine stories. But you could do high rises. You should be able to do high rises in, in a very sort of Hawaiian way. This is not it. This is the same old. This could be in Vancouver. This could be anywhere. It's basically, again, um, a microwave or an aquarium you're looking out. This is a unit here that has, it's a, it's a privileged unit because it has actually a view or, and light and potentially air to the side here. You're looking obviously here towards downtown. So you're looking Eva and you see Mauka on the right talking. Warehousing the workforce is these horrible towers that went up soon after I came. And I saw that, that term workforce housing, which you're saying, you know, you kind of lock people away at night. So then, you know, they get their six, seven hours of sleep so they can perform their three jobs uh, for the rest of the time until they come back and they drop dead and have their recharging. You know, that's how they even called it on the construction sites. And they claim it affordable. So here is the numbers at the top left. One bedroom, uh, one bathroom, uh, 500 square feet, 500 k ish. So this is this is out of reach for still too many people, right? There's some more affordable or you know units in there, but it's really not uh, cutting it. Is is our point? And this is uh, sorry for the blurriness, but the resolution of the camera wasn't good enough. But you see here that the lanais or balconies are actually wider than these three bays of windows. And this is only to uh, have uh, uh, someone on your lanai, which is an air AC unit. <laughs> so these are, these are, once again, single wall AC units, which is absolutely a standard that we should not do anymore. This is the picture that we zoomed in. And the, the project is next to the Stanford car development with a Kamehameha head on here. If I move me over here, which if you want to know our opinion about it, watch the show microwaving, warehousing, the workforce. There we go again. And this is happening over and over and over again. And we're just saying we need to stop this. And this is us being sort of here uh, romantically silly about it because I'm throwing in two words here. 
uh, of both our, you know, your Swiss language and our English one here, which is Rückbauen or Dismantle. So this is, you actually could go and, and reverse uh, this whole thing. And now I'm jumping over one picture here because right behind me is our dear friend Thomas Auer who says, hi, we just went to here behind me to the Maui Munich restaurant, which is a Hawaiian themed. And we walk by right next to him here where he stands now behind me is a Zepp roof housing project from mid century, which is still one of the best. And at the top right is where we drove by Howard Hughes's wanna be affordable, which is in raw construction. And we basically said, hey, this is thermally ready to move in. So that's our suggestion for this Ililani here as well. Go strip it naked again from the mumu they put on and basically inhabit in, uh, in its raw way because it's thermally possible. If it's socially possible, it needs a longer investigation and discussion. Jay, our producer here being behind us, once said, do I have to be naked in these? We, we put this out on discussion, we promised to him. And we said, no, you don't have to, because this is inclusive. So everyone can do what they want, right? And very much like in your original culture, Martin, like very favea-ish, you can actually go and leave up the finishing of the unit to the people. This happens actually a lot in your culture. Maybe you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. No, and these the fact, I mean, the, 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 the slum, the favela, dynamic on which everybody's like occupying uh, their spaces they can generate a, a super organic dynamic uh, livelihood of course when we are like doing a bottom-up project uh, promoted by the by the city or by a developer you need to like to to to, to build it at once and you have to do it uh, uh, massively and so on but you there are some things that you can leave up to people, no. Uh, it, it is good to have dynamic facades, dynamic facades with plants, with hammocks, with tables, with uh, uh, static bicycles, and so on, for people to start inhabiting the balconies. Again, we have to celebrate that there are balconies; they, they have an ice, which is good, no. But uh, again, the relationship between these internal and exterior spaces it will always be a closed glass, AC space, no, and the. Uh, uh, I, I just want to bring the point up about the public sector, so the city promoting projects that have to be the example. No, uh, uh, the less systems you have, the cheaper this housing is uh, at once at the beginning, at the at the moment of buying it, but also during the livelihood of these projects. No, how much energy are you spending on those projects? And then, if you, as a city or as a county or as a state, uh, with a Terrible uh, uh, energy grid as Hawaii, which is mainly uh, fossil fuels. Uh, you have to be a, to give an example, and uh, buildings are consuming so, consuming so much energy. You cannot do the statement of the opposite. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. And again, sorry for being insisting with that. If you own the land, if you own the money, and if there is unlimited clients because there is need of housing, I am suffering it as a newcomer to Hawaii. Uh, uh, you can do somehow good things. You can bring statements to architecture. It's not just the developers, uh, uh, let's say the bad developers uh, uh, doing, uh, taking all the decisions and, and bringing their ideas. Because at the end here, we are talking about ideas, about about which are the ideas that are shaping livelihood. You make a great point. And this is actually fronting the government area here, the civic center is right to the left of us here with one of the proposals we thought the, the Takashi Anbi municipal parking actually has these uh, circular openings, voids in them. And we once said we were revisiting Primitiva one last time. So if you want to know what that is, you go back to the, to the, to the last week's show. Um, and you see, we were thinking you could actually insert one into it. And then the government would be uh, the, the developer, right? The promoter. And they could actually then sort of risk and experiment more things. Just as you age, right? The obligation of a university is to experiment, to do things that the private sector cannot do. So <laughs> is the government itself. And, and what you said is, is again, is, is that slogan of Thomas Auer and Florian Nagler, who I also had the chance to, to just meet, 
and their thing is built simple. And they, they started this, you know, this discussion a while ago and actually in 2016 already, the, the link there to this publication is from 16. So, um, and, and nowhere else but in Hawaii, we can bring this to the full fruition because we don't have the freezing temperatures that we got to heat against. We don't have the subtropics um, where you have 100% uh, percent, uh, you know, humidity saturation, which makes it really hard. But even in Singapore, WOHA is doing that regardless, right? They're, they're aiming for it. We don't have anything or anyone doing this in Hawaii, and we need this really desperately. So yeah. we have uh, one more thing to add to how we ended last week on the show, because Jay was asking to get that picture back here in the very uh, top in the middle here. And he said that beach kind of looks strange to me. It looks like eroded or climate changed, eaten away. And you were actually making uh, the very surprising, uh, you know, comment was what? And that's another tragic similarity to uh, both our homes, your homes in, 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 in Hawaii and, and, and where you had lived in 2008 as a student in Barcelona, and the keyword is build up beaches. So tell us more about that. Yeah, yeah. this, this uh, up here, we were talking about Barceloneta, which is a beach that was completely made up. It was an old port, an industrial area, uh, uh, with uh, the old town of La Barceloneta aside, which was the old fisherman's village of, of, of Barcelona. Uh, they remodeled it. They did some uh, institutional buildings, very beautiful, that actually we were uh, uh, talking about last time. Uh, probably we'll bring them back. Um, and they did the whole uh, Villa Olimpica, the, 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 the Olympic port and some decks. They brought money to do that development uh, with uh, some very dense developments that uh, generated uh, building uh, through building rights brought money for the city. So the, the city again was having the power and taking the decisions uh, through a master plan uh, uh, to to uh, to guide uh, the, the 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 built environment as they as the, as the city wanted. They did La Barceloneta, and and this uh, beach that we are seeing up there was every year at the beginning of the summer, spring they were filling out the beach. With new sand, they were cleaning it out and oxygenating it and uh, and building back back again. Here, there are also many constructions going on along the beaches. We have climate change. All these beaches are getting corroded uh, because of sea level rise. We already see in Waikiki some some decks that are getting breaking and uh, broken and so on. Uh, and this is something that have to be that have to be to look natural, but at the end, it's very artificial. Huh? Which is good, you know, both, in the built environment, is the reality. Yeah, so they're both kind of fake beaches. That's what they share. Uh, we're getting to the end of the, our show time. We have a little left, but we want to thank uh, Lenny and Rima up there to, uh, to the top right who've been with us. And they had their drone with them. So they took the picture here at the very bottom left that we were just seeing. And that's for the architectural guide of Honolulu that we're uh, that we're in the process of, of, of writing. So thank you guys uh, for that. And, and now for the little time left, we actually want to go back to what you just uh, basically indicated, these beautiful uh, sort of uh, public buildings. And before that, of course, you can't get around the Sagrada Familia, which probably everyone knows and everyone is sort of, you know, romantic about. You would call it, I think, uh, probably an esoteric approach, but it's actually been becoming very exoteric, which is basically more populist and popular because most people, as odd as it is, kind of like it. And I threw in something that we're, because we're missing De Soto, uh, because in his show up there, the evolution of islands tradition of innovation here shares with us that the Iolani Palace, so the palace by the Hawaiian kingdom, was actually completed the year when Gaudí started the Sagrada Familia. And as you see with a crane up there at the top right, it's not anywhere close to being finished. And that was the year of um, 1889. 
And so for the ones who haven't been in the Sagrada Familia, it's pretty crazy and it's pretty complex to say the least. And maybe we leave it with that to just for the last couple of minutes, go to that one building that you probably have in mind because you actually, we showed it briefly last time and now we're going back. And I just want to compare maybe that sort of crazy complexity that the Sagrada has for various reasons is seems to be reappearing in this building, but uh, uh, maybe for other reasons, for less esoteric or exoteric, but more environmental reasons. And we're looking at that building here from uh, from the bottom up. So we're seeing these layers of a catwalk in front of the glass curtain wall. And then we see these substructures here um, to basically then hold up uh, this screen. And the screen, that we featured last time at the very top left from your picture from uh, 2008 because it had just been completed. Here we're, we're doing our, our, our homework here. It was completed by these architects that you can read here in 2006. So it was very fresh, right? And refreshing yeah. for you, Martin, right? Yeah. No, I remember we, I visited that project that, that was one brand new. Uh, my professor at that time, Steve Bonnell, that is a very known architect in Barcelona, told me that I wanted to build out of wood. He was a little bit old school dish and uh, he told me, no, we should not build with wood because uh, all buildings at the coast uh, get ruined with wood. And I am super happy to see these images because the building looks even more beautiful than it was at that time 15 years ago. Probably they had to maintain it as you have to maintain glass, as you have to maintain steel, no? But this is also part of the buildings. It's the people that live there that take, or institutions that are taking care of those, those buildings. The conclusion, wood works close to the coasts, no? Boats are made, yeah. were made out of wood. Decks are still made out of wood. Uh, so we can really think uh, 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 optimistically about wood uh, in, in, in many uses, structurally, but also uh, for, for, uh, uh, louvers and protections and carpentry in, in architecture in the coasts, as was doing Absolutely. here centuries ago. I totally support that. It reminded me of next to be here now at the top right, which is that military diner we did about even ten years before this building here in the mid in the mid nineties, which also has a a wooden sunscreen uh, facing south, and and again. As long as wood can always dry out and, and it's, it's a screen and once it gets wet, uh, the breeze that we have a lot on the coast as well is always going to dry it out. And uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, evidence-based design, EBD, post-occupancy elevation, POE, uh, life cycle assessment when I'm back here. And actually our uh, Bavarian forest home here next door uh, of our business partner, Isabel, she had just uh, started to uh, chlorine, which sounds very kind of maybe not as en environmental, but it's basically what you use in pools and it's not anywhere acidy to your, to your skin. Uh, they basically washed uh, the thermally modified timber poplar uh, siding, uh, rain screen with chlorine, and it basically makes the uh, microorganisms go away, and it looks like brand new. I should probably share a picture of that. It's just Amazing. hot off uh, these days here where we basically did that. So we want to encourage, yes, the island here, uh, you know, use wood a lot. Uh, you're a big advocate for it. There's multiple shows about your proposal for Lahaina and its rebuilding that we did a little while ago. So if you're interested in that, watch that and, and, and feel, your, Martin, your enthusiasm about it. And we also want to hear and on the note that this building here is a biomedical research center, right? So this reminds us a lot of our Kaka'ako, which has a cancer center. So this is public private partnership. And we want to really see that level of innovation uh, in Hawaii just as well. And the cancer center is not anywhere close to, to this year. It's very conservative, very kind of POMO-ish, very fossil formalism. And these young architects here, again, were really, really, uh, you know, pushing it um, and, 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 and doing some pretty good, uh, crazy, innovative work. 
uh, that we want to uh, talk more about, but we're at the end of the show, so maybe we uh, leave here with uh, where we pick it up from next week because there was an architect um, around that time uh, when you were there uh, that was Jean Nouvel who built his uh, Torah Akbar that we see to the left, which you can even see a formal kind of analogy to the Sagrada Familia but we want to look at the building and the audience might say, well, this is old stuff. Why are you going back to this old stuff? Because it might actually still, uh, you know, hold up pretty well, as you said, and still, um, even though it's, it has aged or maybe because it has aged, maybe it withstood the times fairly well. And that's what we want to continue to talk about. Uh, again, uh, starting to talk about the typology of tall buildings that is so familiar to us in Hawaii to then eventually actually go to that perimeter block and to social housing, which is some uh, lots more exciting stuff uh, to share from Barcelona. So, but that we have to do uh, next week again, because we're at the end of showtime here. So thanks, Martin, for uh, sharing your memories and, uh, and your, your excitement about how um, uh, uh, Barcelona has sort of developed ever since you were there. And so um, yeah. we also have, uh, we, we charged Jay to uh, dig out pictures from uh, when he was there in 1965, right before he came to Hawaii. So Jay, please uh, dig these out. We're excited about them. Because these were different days, right? We're talking, uh, that was still uh, under Franco, you know, these were the, dictatorial days that did not prevent our, you know, the architects to be rebellious and, and, you know, and adventurous either. So no excuses for no one, especially not in Hawaii. Okay. See you for that next week. Bye-bye.